Hello everybody. Welcome to this morning, this good morning. I can't wait to start talking to y'all. We have a, a very extremely important little thing that's necessary that's sometimes not talked about and missed and not discussed. So we have a good little bit of education for the morning. That's for sure. So Hello, everybody. I am Catherine from the Sewing Studio at Lady Lake and the Sewing Studio Fabric Superstore. Welcome aboard. So today's Five Minute Friday topic is to put a cap on it. Something that is not really discussed all that often is what to use, when to use, and how to use the various spool caps that come with your machines. And various brands have various types of spool caps, etc. So I'm just going to go over some common thread spools and which cap you should be putting it on with. Okay, so I'm starting off with just one of our small little Guterman rolls of thread. It's just really a tiny little 100 meter um, spool of thread. So the challenge is if you were to put your medium sized spool cap on there, your thread now has to like climb Mount Everest to get over that spool cap. So it's not always such a good thing on that. So with this tiny spool of thread, you really want to use your small spool cap with it. When you use that small spool cap with it, it really does just hold it in place nice and tight. And your thread doesn't have too hard of a job to pass right on over that. Okay, so with your small spools, you're going to use your small spool cap. All right, now with your medium sized spools, I often see students putting their Jigundo extra large spool cap on there. And again, what happens? When you have that, now your thread has to climb Mount Everest again, and it's too much work. Additionally, what can happen is right in here, because it is so tall away from your spool, your thread can get caught in there and bind up, which is going to create all kinds of problems as well. So with your medium sized spool of thread, you really should be using your medium sized spool cap. It just fits right around the outside borders of your spool of thread. So it's not too big, not too small. It's a little bit of a Goldilocks. It's just right. Okay, so moving on, what do you do when you have one of your specialty kind of spools that you would be using for embroidery or sometimes there's some metallic spools that are shaped like this? So with this type of spool, your thread angles out towards where your spool spindle is going to be. So here I have an isocord spool of thread. I've often seen people just leave it alone, and that's certainly something you can do, just go without a cap, but you don't want it to fall down and lean on the edge there because then your thread has to pass through that area and it can get caught. And sometimes I see students take their spool and spin it around like that. Again, this is not a good thing to do because here on this end, now you're asking your thread to climb Mount Everest again. What you're supposed to do with this type of spool is that you got or you can get a little mini spool cap. And what it does is it fits right down in there and it will hold the spool of thread right up against your back there. So that's ideally the type of spool cap you should be using with this type of spool. So let me hold that where you can see real quick. It really is just a tiny little mini spool cap. Okay, so there are also spools of thread that are built exactly that same way, but when you go to put the mini spool cap on, it doesn't fit in the hole or the hole is just slightly too big. So with in that circumstance, what you can do is spin your mini spool cap the other direction. And when you do that, you can spin it around and now the little head of it, the tip of it, will push against the spool of thread, again, keeping it from bouncing around in your machine. So the little mini spool cap can go inside that top of your spool or it can go up against it. All right, so then you have these kind of specialty spools of thread. I know it's white, we have a white machine. So there's my hand. When you have this kind of specialty spool of thread, the problem with that is there's not really any ideal spool cap. If I go to put my small one on, 
again, my thread can really get caught in there between the spool and the spool cap. If I was to do a medium size spool cap or my large size spool caps, again, the problem is you're asking your thread to climb Mount Everest and it can get caught in there. So with this kind of specialty spool, it really is best just to go over to the side of your machine. There's all kinds of different spool stands out there. I love, love, love a good, strong, heavy metal spool stand. It only costs a couple bucks more than a plastic one, but it'll last forever. So the idea is with a spool stand, your thread can sit right on your spool stand and travel up and over in the same path that it would normally take to get over to your thread uptake area and all that kind of stuff. So sometimes it's best not even to have any spool cap at on, on at all if you use your spool stand. Okay, last but not least, I wanna talk about the big gigantic spool cap. This one, the big one that you get, honestly, we have a zillion different kinds of, um, different kinds of brands of thread and they've, we've got Guterman, Mettler, Madeira, Aerolock, Aerofill. We have all kinds of thread. <laughs> honestly, this one doesn't fit on any of them. We've got big spools, little spools, etc., And this one doesn't fit on any of them. But wait a second, Catherine, you've got a big spool versus your small spool. Well, yeah, that's all well and good. But with your big spool versus your small spool, the sizes of where you would put your spool caps is the same. Your medium sized spool cap would be the one that you would use on both of those. So just when you have this big spool cap here, just be cautious because it is, you just don't want your thread to climb Mount Everest. So if you get a random spool of thread that's gigantic, maybe that'll work for it, but in most circumstances, you're not using it. So the moral of the story is, match the size of your spool cap to the size of the spool end that you have. And as long as you do that, you shouldn't get into any trouble at all. Well, thank you so much for watching me. I really do appreciate it. If you'd like to share this information with your friends, please share actually with the button that says share. Like us on Facebook, Sewing Studio Fabric Superstore or the Sewing Studio at Lady Lake. We also have our YouTube channel because some people are like, I don't do the Facebook. So you can watch us there on YouTube as well. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye.